Hello everybody, it's Kane here with Kepler Electronics, and if you've been following this channel for a while, you've probably seen that I've been working on a couple of Antweight combat robots. Stompbot, a defensive wedge made from a guitar pedal and blast wave, a synthwave-inspired drum spinner. I recently was able to make it to Kilobots 43 at the Canadian National Championships. This is the largest event in Canada, and competitors from all over Canada and the United States come to test their robots against each other. I drove a long way to come to this competition, and it did not disappoint. My first fight was with Blastwave fighting Lobotomy, a nasty undercutter from Bay Area Robotic Combat. Here's how that fight went. All right, both drivers are in, ready to go. I'm ready for this. Two, one, fight. Blastwave, a little bit over my motorcycle, there it goes. It's fine. Lobotomy's already up to going. One, off the belt. Should you tap uh -oh. out? Tap out. Oh, the bottom came off. This fight was quite short and disappointing. On the second hit, they took out one of my screw posts on the lid, and since the other screws were quite loose, the entire lid just fell off. I had to run Blastwave upside down due to the threading on the motor causing the pulley to simply spin off when the weapon got up to speed. In the same hit that caused the lid to come off, the weapon belt came off and became entangled in Lobotomy's weapon. Now, this would normally result in an untangling of the two robots, but the battery was now hanging on the bottom of the robot, and on the next hit it would have caught fire. This is an automatic forfeit for good reason. Lipo fires are nasty and toxic, and if you can prevent them, you really should. After the fight, I ended up with a wheel with a nice slice out of it and a chassis that couldn't support a lid. All my electronics were fine, but due to the repeated heating and cooling of the motor throughout testing and battle, the motor mount was weak enough to be broken off quite easily. Brandon from Bay Area Robotic Combat actually ended up giving me some of these, coarse thread screws that can self-tap. This was a serious upgrade from tapping machine screws into plastic holes, which should have seemed like a bad idea from the beginning. These new screws ended up holding everything together extremely well. My next fight was with Stompbot, against steamed hams from Team Buttsbots. This robot is absolutely insane and I still can't get over how small this thing is. Steamed hams is a nasty drum spinner that packs quite a punch. Since they're a two-wheel drum, they ride on these little small forks at the front, which are quite hard to get under. I ended up switching from my steep wedge to my shallow wedge with the leading edge ground down to a point to hopefully get under them. Here's how this fight went. Everybody's in and ready. Steam hands versus three, two, one, fight. Steam hands and stop off. Quite a boxy little thing. Very fast moving, but steam hands are hard hitting drum spinner. Currently just making away at the wedge there. Easy for him to hit, but hard for him to break. Stop on Man, is that thing squirrely? Uh oh, left wheel's gone. Oh, are right you now. kidding me? He's oh, takes advantage of the situation. Steam hands hitting the open side of the box, setting the cross the arena. Stop on flipping out of strike. Do a little He's able to ride around on the front at the bottom there. Looks like oh, there's a charging point to run. Uh oh, now he's off his wheels. Ten seconds to show some movement, but he is definitely stuck on that post. Just a few good hard hits by Steve Ham. The wheel comes off. And the lead will go to Brian. Steve Ham. This fight hurt. When reassembling the robot, I must not have tightened the wheel enough, and the hub came straight off. I was able to drive around for a little bit, but I just ended up getting high centered on my wheelie pole. In terms of damage sustained, one of the corners of my lid got taken off, but that's mostly cosmetic. It still works fine. I also got a few good scrapes on the top of the chassis, and a couple nicks in the wedge. All in all, not a lot of damage. I was able to bolt the wheel assembly back on and go back into the arena with just a bit of work. Now this tournament was a double elimination tournament, and both bots would be placed in the loser's bracket, where they could potentially fight their way back up to the top. Stompbot was up next against Super Nintendo Chalmers, the other ant weight brought by Buttsbots. Super Nintendo Chalmers is what is called a melty brain spinner, a type of spinner that uses its drive to spin in a circle extremely fast. It uses an onboard microcontroller to make small changes to the speed of the wheels as it spins to move in the desired direction. Stompbot went into this match basically how it had come out of the match with steamed hams, save for tightening the wheel and swapping out for a new battery. Let's see how this fight went. A strong box, a big wedge on the front, that's off and all it takes. They're both ready to go. You ready so for this? Get one. Three, two, one, fight. So, speed Stompbot, don't want to do it anymore. They're trying to push him in. There's so much energy that it needs to do it. Oh, that's it. This fight was one of the highlights of the event for me. 
I tried to box rush Super Nintendo Chalmers and ended up getting my wheel into his spinner. At this point, Chalmers starts bouncing around the arena, landing right next to the pit on my side. I get launched a couple times before Chalmers ends up launching into the wall, into the blue hazard, then back into the wall before falling onto the floor and proceeding not to move, and I win by knockout. After the match, I went to go see what happened, and Chalmers had taken a lot of damage. I think its electronics were dead, and its frame was extremely warped. In terms of damage on Stompbot, there were a couple nicks in the front of the wedge, but not much else. My next fight was back with Blastwave, this time fighting Taserface V2, a vertical spinner that does more sawing than launching. If this bot looks sorta of familiar, it should. It's the other bot brought by Brandon from Bay Area Robotic Combat, who I had just faced with Blastwave. Now, I ended up having to run my backup weapon bar for this fight. This wasn't due to damage done in my last fight, but rather that I couldn't get the bar back into the chassis. Due to the Loctite I put on the screws, the axle was basically glued into place. Since I put the axle through the chassis into the bar and through the other side of the chassis, I would have to bend the chassis to get the bar back in. So I switched to my backup bar, which only has screw threads on the outer two holes. I was able to get everything back up and running, so let's get into the fight. Autonomous mode in three. We'll begin shortly in three, two, one, fight. Hold up the speed. No! I just killed a motor. Right now, we the metal weapon on the front there. So, we can get some of the more parts. Actually, what Blaster really wants to do is keep that metal bar in front, because it is definitely the one part that can take it easy against that fall. Oh! This is the whole rest of it. This is the time around and say, this is far too exciting. And get two bolts already. Now, take it from the other side. Hit him down! Yeah, the doing a good job of keeping the hardest part at the front. What are you thinking you saw already? The plastic or both parts. So you're using that far as best as you can. Just right away, again. Both of them have the windows closed, so you're really hoping for some kind of an instruction to come off of it. Locker's backing away. Uh oh. oh. Now I'm going to put a cross. Not the red one and the blue one, but the one on top of the table is all very good. Now he's towards the brackets on the left side there. So he's being pushed around by the blunt end of the brackets. Very good, Harvey. Well done, driving out. That's all I can do. It's a really good number on this drum. Maybe you can use the drum, I'm not sure. Pink on the outside. But Blackberry getting around, it looks like the table is definitely not uh, a very mobile robot, it's mostly about the weapon. We are asked about pitching the way it happens, but it's not trying again. <laughs> Wait, is he out? Don't move him. Oh. And now Blaster is coming in and taking advantage of the fact that his weapon is turned away. Oh! Oh, there goes the motor. So right now he's on the side, and the uh, saw is staying outside of the robot. <laughs> he's blasting up on the wall for a moment there, falls back onto his wheel. He does still have the blunt end, uh, able to wrap around the side of the table that they said, and he's using the red hazard. He's done it successfully several times now. Now he's going to push over the wall, and the saw is going to be watching time is over. That is the end of the so at the beginning of this fight, I was able to get a couple good shots at the side of Taserface. I get popped up once by Taserface, and upon driving back at him, my weapon shaft came out of one side and resulted in the weapon ceasing to function. Since the weapon was my most armored part of the robot, I decided to use it as a shield to try and push into Taserface. With this, the screws ended up falling out and I realized why the bar had come out. Since I had to switch to my backup bar, I hadn't locked headed the screws in, and the vibration from spinning had caused the screws to back out enough for the axle to slide out. I keep driving in a taser face, using the front of my bot as a shield and trying to push, even getting him into the red hazard twice, before driving into the red hazard. 
which sends me flying into the corner, my weapon bar flying out, and me losing all of my washers like Sonic losing his rings. I figured out that I could kind of use my weapon supports to kind of keep his weapon at bay, and ended up pushing him around before pinning him up against the wall for a bit before the buzzer sounded. From what I had heard, it seemed to be extremely close. He got all the damage, but I was able to control most of the fight, save for being pinned shortly. I ended up losing and I can see why. There were more parts of Blast Wave in the arena than for almost any other fight. Granted, they were mostly washers, but still. That was an amazing fight, and I'm super surprised that I managed to survive that long. In terms of damage, the bar was completely destroyed. The spinner on Taser Face had basically sawed into it and gouged out some nice big chunks of the aluminum. He also got a nice cut into one of the back wheels, along with a couple chunks of the outer wheels. I did have the hole for the weapon axle grow a bit bigger and I don't really know what caused that. Another thing I'm not really sure of is how the chassis ended up splitting here. That's some serious damage and I'm not quite sure what happened. In terms of smaller damage, my weapon motor came loose and one of my drive ESCs died shortly after this fight, but that may have been damaged by me when I was trying to get everything switched into a new chassis for the rumble. With Blast Wave now out of the competition, I just had Stompbot. Stompbot was fighting the Highlander, built by David from Team Small Robots. Highlander's a pneumatic flipper and a pretty good one too. My best bet in this match was to win a pushing match. To do so, I switched from the higher speed motors I was using to the original lower speed higher torque motors. We ended up switching out the wedge to get lower ground cleaners to aid in the pushing battle. However, the new wedge had some issues. It was a bit too steep and long, and the robot was getting hung up on it in the wheelie post. To remedy this, I chopped off the end of the wheelie post, which resulted in the robot wheeling a bit. I tried to extend the post with some tape to try and find the balance, but it still didn't work. I was going to try and tape some of the washers from Blastwave to the front, but Brian from Team Buttspots suggested that I use one of his magnets and glue it to the front of the robot. This helped magnificently, and I was ready to fight the Highlander. So let's see how that fight went. Everyone's ready, so we will begin in three, two, one, fight. So look how fast Stompbot comes out into the center there. Nice fast split there from the compressed air lifter. Another one. No. Oh. Oh. Look how fast Stompbot drives and how well it's able to get into that boxy frame of Highlander with that wedge. Another good solid split. Stompbot. Oh. Oh. This was a short fight. I wasn't able to win the ground clearance battle, which was a shame, but I was much more maneuverable. I was able to get around him a couple times and push him around, but I wasn't able to get him into the pit. He got a couple good flips on me, and in trying to self right from one of these, I ended up backing up straight into the pit. An avoidable and disappointing loss, and Stompbot was out of the competition. But even though both my bots were out, I managed to get a few more fights. Towards the end of the tournament, when there are only a few bots left, they have to give those left time to repair and recharge. And to keep the live audience happy, they let those who are already out of the competition fight those who are also out of the competition. Since this video is getting fairly long already, I'll split that off into its own video. Thanks for watching, and if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe. If you want to see the builds for my Ant White Combat Robots, the link is down in the description. Thanks again for watching, and keep fighting!